A Volkswagen Bug gets a brand new body. Here's your look at the new 3.0 Transformers MDLX Bumblebee. The Transformers MDLX Bumblebee measures nearly 5 inches tall with approximately 36 points of articulation and a die-cast metal frame. Accessories include a laser blaster, a standard head, a masthead, and three pairs of interchangeable hands. MDLX is a new series of articulated figures capturing the spirit of 3-0's renowned DLX series at a smaller scale with similar high range of articulation and great durability, resulting in a groundbreaking affordable price. Before we get to looking at the brand new MDLX Bumblebee, which again marks the first figure in 3-0's new line of MDLX Transformer figures, I'd like to first thank the folks over at 3-0 who did in fact provide Bumblebee that we could have a look at in this video. We're going to go ahead now and take the ruler and put it to the top of Bumblebee's head. And the description certainly lives up to it as the figure stands 5 inches in height or just about 13 centimeters tall. The figure includes a modest amount of accessories, six pairs of interchangeable hands, an interchangeable head sculpt that's a throwback to the original Generation 1 Bumblebee toy, and Bumblebee comes included with his laser blaster, which will be the first thing we're going to have a look at. Cast here in a dark gunmetal gray plastic, but to the credit of 3-0 brush nicely, a silver finish, so the blaster looks like it's been in several battles. It's a bit of a departure from the traditional blaster we're used to seeing Bumblebee carrying around, a much bigger blaster that can be held in his hand. Although right now, the hands that he's got in the sockets of his forms, the stock hands that came out of the packaging like this, aren't really going to be cutting it because they're molded closed shut. However, the figure does come included with a pair of gripping hands, carefully picking these up as they are small in size. They're very nicely painted in that same silver wash that they've also added to his blaster. Spinning around so you can see the nice bright colored lemon yellow that they've added to the top pads of the palms. Really nice looking hands. He also comes with a pair of gestured hands. For me, considering he only really has one blaster to hold, I'm probably going to be displaying the figure, I think, with a gestured hand on the other forearm. To change out the hands, pretty simple to do. All you have to do is just pick the figure up. You'd be surprised, really, when you're picking this guy, how small he is in size. And yet, for his small size, he really does make up for it in stature. We're going to go ahead and remove the hand, though, carefully removing it. As you can see, there's very tiny little pegs. And we are going to replace it with a gripping hand snapping into place, although snapping is probably not the best word you really want to be using to describing joints. Then we can go ahead then and take the blaster. Now his fingers are pretty soft and plastic, which actually makes things a lot easier to get the blaster into his hand. Sort of just twist it around until you get the desired look that you want. And while we're also on the uh, subject of changing our hands, let's go ahead and do the other hand as well, just removing it from the peg. And let's just pop in the interchangeable gestured hand. With the amount of articulation, you'll be surprised how much articulation this guy's actually packing. I'm probably going to, yeah, get him in a nice gesture pose, getting the blaster in his hand, turning his head around. Even just that and that alone, what little time I've spent just doing that. Yeah, just such a neat looking figure. Let's go ahead and take the blaster out of his hand, though. Carefully. There we go. Put that to the side. As for his other accessory... Just straighten out his arm here. The figure also comes included. I'm going to put him down, actually, for one second here. With an interchangeable head sculpt. I really like the nod that they've done here because it's a throwback, like I said, to the original Generation 1 Bumblebee, who never really had an original mouth, or he had a faceplate more than a mouth and a nose. And I think they've replicated that nicely here. To change out the head sculpt, one thing I found was a little bit tricky about the figure is when you do remove the head, I guess we can kind of look quickly at the head sculpt. We're going to go back to this anyways. Just want to show you what the stock head sculpt looks like. Really nice looking update look to Bumblebee. But what I was saying, though, is when it comes to removing his head, you got to kind of be careful because the neck half the time really does want to come along for the ride. Carefully removing the neck, as that's certainly not something I want to be losing. Pop that back onto the peg. Nice, again, satisfying snap. And we go ahead and then replace it with the visored face. Just pop that in place. Now, again, if you do like the look of Generation 1 Bumblebee, at least as the toy, this certainly does fit the bill for that. You can see the difference between the two. While I am a big fan of the original Generation 1 toy, having owned it at one point myself, I'm probably still going to stick with this head sculpt, but I did definitely want to show you the difference between the two. Other than really just the face, everything else still seems to stay the same. A nice wash of paint of silver that they've added to both. Again, we're just going to go ahead and remove this. 
See if the neck, yeah, the neck wants to go with it. I really don't like dealing with such small items like this. Again, we just go ahead and put that back onto the peg. You can see it's a double hinge joint or double ball joint. There's one ball joint right there. Then the neck essentially attaches onto that. And then whatever head you decide to display him with, let's go back to this original head. Again, that's also on a ball joint. So you get a ball joint up here, and then you get a ball joint at the base of the neck as well. Getting a closer look, though, at Bumblebee, what a really nice looking figure. Again, small in size, but 3-0 really does certainly make up for it with just the detail and the paint alone. You know, the first thing, well, I, actually, you know, backtracking that a little bit. When I first took this figure out of the packaging, the way they've painted this figure reminded me of something. And I had to spend a little bit of time trying to think of what that item was. Then it came to me, Transformers Devastation. If anybody remembers playing the original Transformers game, really great game, by the way. I mean, it's pretty much repetitive after a while, but the idea that you can actually transform into a vehicle and battle, battle giant Devastator and even Motormaster and the rest of the Stunticons, very, very cool game. But yeah, like the paint finish very much reminded me of Transformers Devastation. I think why it, it reminds me so much of it is the way they've panel lined the figure. Not only just the head sculpt alone, which we can spend a lot of time talking about, really happy with that head sculpt. It sort of is a blending, I feel, of Transformers Devastation, which again is really heavily influenced by the original 80s cartoon. And it sort of does feel like the more modernized Bumblebee that we're getting nowadays in the movies. I'm thinking more to the standalone Bumblebee and not, not so much the other Transformer films. I really do like the head sculpt, though. I'm going to spin this around so you can see it from all the sides. Not only is it panel lined nicely, but they've also added a, a finish, a wash to it that has darkened some of those details that really does give it a lot of extra personality. Very happy with this head sculpt. But again, like going back to the rest of the body, the way they've panel lined it and then they've added these little notches and stuff to it, I very much feel like I'm looking like a, at a character from Transformers Devastation, the video game. Again, if you haven't had a chance to check that out. Spin the figure around so you can see all the details here. I'm going to kind of move his arm out of the way so you can kind of see the inner workings of it. For the obvious reason, like other 3-0 releases, Bumblebee doesn't transform. It sacrifices transformation for what I feel to be a much better looking mold. You sort of can kind of put together how he would look like a Bumblebee or transform at least into a Volkswagen bug with the majority of the car sort of being his footing, his boots that you can see down below here. The front, the hoods, the headlights here, and even the front bumpers replicated nicely, even to the point where you can see they folded in the tires. It really does lead me to believe like where the rest of the car would actually come about, because if this is just the car here, how would the rest of his body fold into such a small frame like this? This, of course, is the top roof of the Bumblebee uh, Volkswagen car. You can see the back of it, and you can even see the spare tire referenced both in the cartoon and the original toy. Really like the fact that they actually included that. Uh, it doesn't have any posability. You can't move this around, but it certainly does more than make up for it in other places as well. The majority of the figure underneath is, of course, the more darker plastic that they've used and then brushed again on there as the additional silver finish. But like even the yellow, for example, isn't a very hard to look on the uh, with the eyes, bright yellow. In, in fact, actually, it's more of a warmer yellow they decided to go with. I guess they could have easily bumped the colors up and made it a brighter yellow, but I, I think actually this color of yellow complements the figure. I think making it too bright would have looked a little too strong on the eyes. But like, they've really toned it back quite a bit. And again, adding the finish, that wash over top of it, you can really see here, especially in the thighs, for example, that additional black finish really does make it look like he's war-torn, like it's really been through a lot of battles, really liking the look of this figure. Okay, so let's talk about the figure's articulation one last time, just to spin this around so you can see it from all the sides. This is, again, the first figure. I think there's also an a, a Optimus Prime that they've also shown images of. But looking at the articulation on just the Bumblebee, for his head, obviously, he's on a ball joint. So there's a ball joint at the base of the neck, and then there's a ball joint we've already established that sits inside the cavity of the head. That allows the head to look down, look up, and also back and forth. And yeah, you can rotate the head all the way around as well. At least with the cavity of the inside of the car, they've left enough clearance space that you're easily able to move the head all the way around, and there's nothing really butting up against it. Now, as for the arms, you can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. It was the only place on the figure that I felt was really tight, so just be careful when you're rotating all the way around. He does have the arm hinges out. Now, the neat thing about the arms is that you can bring the shoulder pads up, and this frees up a lot of necessary space to be able to give the figure a hinge joint or the means to at least bring his arms out at 90 degree angle bend. I like the way that they've done that. The figure does have a bend in the elbow. In fact, actually, it's more than just a single hinge. It almost works almost like a double hinge. 
See, there's that hinge, but it's a little bit further down in the forearm. And then the regular hinge that would normally have been in his elbow. So it sort of does serve as a double hinge joint on his elbow. Hands rotate all the way around. And being that they are also on peg joints, you can rotate those or hinge those back and forth. The figure does have a waist swivel too. The only thing I would say about the waist swivel is be careful of the skirting here. The skirting actually does move out of the way. And this helps a lot when it comes to moving the leg articulation. But while you're doing that, though, just be careful that these aren't higher up when you are rotating the waist. For the risk, of course, it's going to clip against that skirting, potentially break those pieces right off. Again, there's articulation. We'll technically count these as parts that can move on the figure. And again, this allows the figure to be able to do almost a full splits. Oh, a complete full splits, really. And also allow the legs to go further forward. If not for that, you wouldn't be able to do that with the legs. Um, the figure does have a swivel at the top where that's attached to the ball joint. The figure has also a double hinge on the knee. And then when it comes to his feet, you can move them up and down this way. And he also has quite a sufficient ankle pivot. Love, again, the way that the tires are folded in like this. You could really believe that this was once a Volkswagen bug and simply just converted over to a robot. You know, again, for the fact that it's as small as it is, don't let that be a deal breaker for you. If you really like the compact size that this new line of MDLX figures that 3.0 are putting out, first of all, he fits well on a shelf. And I always say this, shelf space is something that becomes fleeting after collecting so many things over so many years that they find yourself a smaller transformer that has just as much detail as a larger scale figure. This is really what's good about the 3.0 MDLX line. Starting things off with Bumblebee, of course, he's probably going to be the smallest of what we're going to be getting with the MDLX. We have, I think, seen images already of an Optimus Prime, which for obvious reasons is going to be a lot bigger than Bumblebee here. But he's small in size. Doesn't transform, no. But again, that's part of the territory when it comes to the stuff that we're getting from 3.0. You're not getting transforming transformers. And if that's not a deal breaker for you, he really is a nice looking Bumblebee. Again, a little bit of that Transformers devastation, at least the way they've colored him. And he's super articulated. He's a really neat looking Bumblebee, like I said, to be putting on a shelf, especially if you don't have a lot of shelf space to work with. Seeing as I spent so much time with the non-faceplate head sculpt, I figured I would rectify that here in Final Looks, as the Bumblebee is spinning around on the rotisserie with the shield guard face instead. One thing that's nice about that one is that it does throw back to the original Generation 1 Bumblebee toy, which of course didn't have a mouth and a nose. It had that visor plate. I really think that's a nice touch that 3-0 included that with the figure. Now again, just kind of stop for a second and look at the pose that I've got the figure in. Would you normally have been able to do that with a transformer that would be able to transform? Maybe. But I think more times than not, you probably will have a figure that's falling over. The figure has so much articulation at its disposal that you can actually get it in rather creative looking poses. I'm sure you could even come up with one a little bit more creative than this. I really, again, like the look of Bumblebee here. It's a different departure than what our traditional Bumblebees would have looked like, especially if you grew up in the 80s like myself, where Bumblebee was a short, standalone side character. He really became more of a prominent character in the new Bayverse Transformer films. But what I like about this one, it's it's sort of... 3-0 fleshing out their own idea of what Bumblebee could look like. And I like that it's sort of a happy medium between the Bumblebee standalone film design of Bumblebee and sort of that original Generation 1 Bumblebee. And between the two, mixing the two the way that they have, you get a nice little happy medium in the middle where this Bumblebee could exist. And again, the way they've colored it really, again, reminds me of Transformers Devastation. That reminds me, I really should go back and play that game again. Highly repetitive. If you haven't already played it, you'll probably already... You'll play the first couple of levels and you'll just feel like you're repeating it again and again but the fact that it does have as many throwbacks to the original 80s cartoon i think is more than enough and you probably could find yourself a dirt cheap copy of transformers Dev devastation if you're looking to track down one but of course that's one of the things i really like also about the design of this one is it does have that sort of panel lining that cell shaded look that we got in transformers devastation i'm really again happy with how this mdl looks mdlx bumblebee looks and just to consider as well that this is the first figure that 3-0 are planning and I'm assuming a long line of MDLX figures. I think the next one we're getting is, is Optimus Prime unless they're pl planning to slip another figure somewhere in between that. But I, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what 3-0 have in store for a slightly smaller, different interpretation of Transformer toys that don't connect to a cartoon. They don't connect to a movie. They're sort of their own standalone thing. And again, I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. A big thank you again to the folks over at 3-0 that did give me the chance to have a look at the first MDLX uh, Bumblebee, or the first Transformers from the MDLX line. This was MDLX Bumblebee. Yeah, side note, 
very hard to say MPLX. You probably have noticed that a couple of times already. Hey, now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, you can do a couple of things for yourself. First of which, you can hit that subscribe button. That's one thing that you can do. You can also hit that bell notification. So you get those friendly reminders of whenever new videos are popping up. And speaking again of things that are popping up at the very end of this video, you may also be seeing a playlist popping up for other things that I've reviewed for 3.0. If you guys wanted to go back and check things out, because 3.0 have covered a lot of stuff, a lot of territory in the last several years, not just Transformers, but a whole bunch of other things as well. If again, you want to check out that playlist, it should be popping up at the end of this video. There is going to be more 3.0 reviews coming your way, so make sure you're keeping your peepers peeled to this channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.